got you. Eh? Nah. It's only check. Yeah, and this is the quest, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't give a shit if you got me or think you have me in check or not. I am. The Unknown Factor, a.k.a. that way will to the hip-hop. So, you know, I mean, catch where I am, catch where I may be, catch where I can. I don't know what you're going to do in regards to that. But that is not the point because this, as I said, is the questionnaire. And, man, I've been loving this. And for the uh, second time here recently, we've got somebody joining us that first got to join us on a PanCon so, Caitlin Yarsky, how you doing? Doing pretty good. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I just got to ask, what was your initial opinion coming into that PanCon? Like, what? Like, because most people get to experience this first. I'm just curious. Right. Mostly just a little fear, because I didn't know what to, like, expect or, like, what I was supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what I was expected to like no you know so oh look you I was know like, I don't know I was I was like a little bit worried about my like my street cred with like comics and their adaptations like I I was like racking my brain to think about like movies that were adaptations of comics and I was like I'm sure I've seen so many besides the, the obvious ones but you know yeah that's why I printed all this out mm -hmm. right this is not a pre-show questionnaire, y'all. If pre-show questionnaires were this thick and I made each guest fill out one, like, with this many questions, I don't think I'd have many people coming on the show. Because that would be kind of funny. You know, it would be, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it to where the show works. And y'all can go read some short questionnaires that are short interviews with everybody over the Patreon up to and including Caitlin. Hopefully I've got yours up before this interview drops if everything works the way I want it to. But, yeah, no, I don't think anyone is expected to know all of this. There were things that I found out in going through all of this. Like, apparently they're working on a Witchblade film. Like, it's, it's, you know, if, just go to Wikipedia and you can find out a stupid amount of crap about, you know. Some of it's off, though, yeah. which, go figure, it's Wikipedia. But it's the quickest way to get the information to where... I'm not breaking my brain with everything else I do, Kaylin. So, yeah. on that note, on the note of breaking your brain, let's just, uh, that ain't even current no more, but I feel it is kind of relevant, right? So let's jump to this, on the note of breaking your brain. What do you think of the uh, huge Hollywood strike going on right now? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, I'm worried for everyone who's involved in it because, uh, you know, these millionaire CEOs have no incentive really right now. They all have enough money to last them multiple lifetimes. So I don't know what's going to get them to the cave uh, because honestly, the, the strikers have a lot more to lose, you know, but I really hope that they pull through, you know? And I don't remember who it was, but there was one CEO of a major production company that said, you know, we're just going to wait them out. Right. Yep. Yep. He's gonna starve them out. Like, wait for them to lose their houses, lose their apartments, lose their everything. Yeah. What a <laughs> it's lovely, like next level evil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a lovely, so lovely too. gentleman he must be. I bet he. I bet he sits in a chair like this with a cat and just. Yep. That's the. That's yep. that's what I envision when I hear that. In all sincerity, is some like some Doctor No looking dude just sitting there with his cat. Yeah. Doctor Evil. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because unfortunately he's not that stupid. <laughs> you know, yeah. if they were Doctor Evil stupid, we wouldn't have near the problem in society that we do with the people that are megalomaniacs like that to that degree. And they're like, no, I need it all. Right now, to cut this mm -hmm. right into comics, though, uh, I think it's funny. Not really funny. It's not. It's not funny. Like, ha ha. It's funny. Like, oh fuck, that's ironic. That yeah. right before, or it might have been during uh, the WAG strike, it might have been right after it started, it might have been a little before, I'm terrible with time, there was another hashtag that was very popular within the comic book community, which is comic books broke me. What's your thoughts on that, especially in relation 
to the strike that's currently going on. I mean, I feel like it yeah. shows something across the entertainment at a higher level if you look at them both combined. Because they are very much the same thing, just different fields. Well, I mean, the trouble is they're not exactly the same in that there's no, there, there are no, like, dragon CEOs hoarding money, you know what I mean? Like, there's no... There's nobody sitting on this like giant pile of wealth in comics. So there's not a lot of money in comics. It's a more niche industry. So I feel like there's there's less blame to go around with it. I feel like it's one of those industries where you kind of like accept a lot of the hardships and the you know being underpaid and things like that because partly because we know that there's nobody like raking it in. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people anyway. Um, uh, my only objection to that is, yeah, everybody that sits on the board of directors at Walt Disney is certainly raking it in from comic book content. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I definitely think that whenever there's an adaptation happening, like, I think Marvel owes a lot of money and credit to, you know, all the creators of everything that they've turned into movies and shows. But, um, so but in terms of, people, like, the dir- yeah, half the people they've ever employed then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Disney too. Yeah. That's that's just crazy to think that that number is that high in the case of Marvel. I just think it's it's you know you see there's a maybe when I look at it I more see just a, a disparaging across society where it's like you know most people just aren't paid right and. You know, in the comic book industry, when when the price of milk and the price of or the minimum wage were closer together as numbers, you know what? More well, people bought comic books. Mm-hmm. But now that you know, minimum wage hasn't really gone up, and the price of milk very much has. I, I think that has a great effect on it. So I think it really has a lot of similarities on a lot of things as far as it just being a bunch of dudes petting cats with way yeah. too much money. In I it. mean, there there's definitely a problem with the comics industry. I'm not a business person, so I don't know what would fix it exactly. But I, I do know that, like, yeah, everybody's, most people in it are underpaid and overworked and it's kind of burnt. Every, I don't know anyone who has, hasn't been burnt out by comics at some point, you know, um, myself included. And it's, it's hard because it's like the thing that you do because you love it. And then that love can go away because you've been working so much and not feeling gratified because you're not necessarily doing what you want or you, it's, it's just like a, it's, um, and don't get me wrong, I'm like really grateful to be working in comics. I love working in comics. It's my favorite. I'm 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 hoping I get to draw them forever. But um but yeah, I don't know anyone who hasn't suffered working in comics. And it's it's not it's not good, it's not okay, <laughs> you know. I, I fully agree. And I mean I mean literally there's a lot of people that I would consider friends of the show, and I, I mean uh, I mean, I'm obviously not going to sit here and name names, but the when the I say that, the list of people that I know personally from this show at this point that have those stories, some that I've just talked to far more than others in all sincerity, it's kind of disparaging to hear. I'm curious then with that, and, and let's let's be real, real quick for everybody out there. If you're working at Walmart and that's your life's work, I really fucking doubt you enjoy it as much as Caitlin does as far as sitting and drawing. Let's make that clear. Any job will burn you out. I don't care what it is, whether you love it or hate it. When you're working too much at a constant rate, anything, anything can burn you out. That's why I'm kind of booking August a little light. But y'all ain't going to notice. Shit will still be dropping at the same rate. But to my question, right, what do you do? Like, when you hit that point... Yeah. To move past it. And what part of you makes you go, God, that sucked, but holy shit, I want to draw some more. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. I think everybody has a different way of coping. Um, some people take breaks, you know, just from comics in general. 
I know a few people who've been doing that, just like kind of resetting and doing other things for a, a little while and getting their head straight. And then other people, like, you know, for me, it's, I, the way, the, the best way for me to deal with, I think I mentioned this in the other um, show, but like I, I work in games and I work in comics and it's kind of like they're, they, I kind of, my income is like half games and half comics. And so it's, um, it's a way to, I, I know I don't love having two full-time jobs, but it's also like a way to alleviate some of the stress of trying to find those gigs and trying to make sure I'm making enough because if I worked full-time just in comics as my rates are, they wouldn't make enough for me to live at least in Portland. So it is nice for me to have a game job because I've been working in games for 15 years and I know what I'm doing there and it's it's not that stressful and I like it and it's a consistent paycheck. So I can like pick and choose my projects and comics a little bit more easily. So just based on what you said, I assume it seems like you prefer to draw comics. Would I be correct in that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and again, assuming on what you just said, I would assume that the gaming end doesn't have the complexity that a comic does. No, it does. But there are so many people involved in it that you are doing one job. And with comics, you're doing a million jobs, you know. Uh, so it's it's just broken up into more, you know, clear you know, clear things. And it's, and again, there is so much more money in games that they can do that. You know what I mean? So that they, they have like an art director and a creative director and a UI person and a, an animator and a character animator and a background drawer. And a, you know what I mean? Like, and, and a 3D modeler and or six 3D modelers, depending on how big the game is, you know, like there are just a million people involved. And so it's, it, it's not that it's not as complex. It's just that, you know, they spread the work out. I'm so annoyed that I cannot remember a name of a show right now. Um, that's all I know. Um, you know the show Always Sunny in Philly? Sure. Okay. You know Mac? Yeah. Okay. You know he did a show where he like runs a gaming company? Yeah, I saw a few episodes of that. Uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, some, oh, shit. Whatever. Google, Google it all. Something right? Quest? Uh, is it quest stuff? Yeah, it is. It's something quest. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, that 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 really should have dawned upon me <laughs> based on the fact that this is the questionnaire. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, it's just funny that you say it. Did you see any similarities between that show and what you had to deal with? Just out of curiosity, I have to ask. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I think it was pretty dramatized. Uh, but I I didn't see that much of it. Um. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple things that seemed on on brand, but also I think they were working on like a like a triple A game, which I work on like smaller games, like you know PC yeah. and mobile games and stuff like that. So it's not I'm not working for like you know I'm not doing like Call of Duty or GTA or anything, you know. Yeah, that seemed yeah they were working on a game that was like a, a World of Warcraft size level, I would say, with what they yeah. uh, with what yeah. they did. It's I want to say it's Vision Quest, but that seems so wrong. I don't know. Google it, y'all. I don't remember. I might be nice and put it in the description. Like, we talk about this show that no one could remember the name of. Uh, so, I'll tell you then, it seems, I mean, you're balancing a lot, obviously, between count, yeah. uh, between comics and then also running in game. How do you find a full balance in that? And I ask that especially somebody that, I ask that as somebody with a personal, like, I want to know how, because, you know, I have my personal life. I run mm -hmm. this show i also really need to record some music that i haven't gotten to and my mic needs set up and that's that's something we won't get into so wow well, like, how do you find a balance and i mean obviously you have to choose things to sacrifice at a time what do you do when that moment comes um i mean it's it really depends on where i'm at with each project you know so with the one of the things the nice things about my current job with games is like Although I am doing some concept art right now just because um, the project called for it, my initial job title was UI artist for this particular job. Um, and UI for me is less, um, well, it doesn't, it doesn't, 
involve drawing as much. It, draw, it involves design, but it doesn't involve as much drawing. And so for me, it's a little bit less uh, intense. Real quick, what is UI? Oh, I'm sorry, user interface. It's like a, okay. it's um, all the buttons and menus and things like that that you see in a game. And that's what we do. It, I, was we just asking for every, I was just asking for everyone watching the show that didn't know. I swear I knew I had no freaking idea what that meant. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because it's not as intensive and it's not as, it's not like I'm, I mean, again, right now I am drawing all day, so it is a little bit draining like that because I'm drawing during the day and then drawing at night. But um, uh, the the general UI stuff is a little bit more like just design heavy, and it's it's a different part of your brain. It doesn't take quite as much energy for me, so it's a nice balance, you know. I don't I don't feel totally wiped by the end of the day, you know. I totally get that based on the job that I work and the yeah that I literally edit the show a lot of the times at my job. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you ever pull that off? You ever worked at work at work? Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> All right, that's I, I agree. I'd say I'd say I'd say I can't I'd like I'd say I can't confirm or deny, but literally. Half the other guys, what they do is sit there and play games like you would design. And I'm like, I don't want to waste my time on that shit. I would rather be doing something. Hey, if you play whatever those games are, whatever, play whatever those games are, much love for checking out the questionnaire. But that's just, yeah. it, it's not for me, it's a brain burner. I'd much rather, like, read or, you know, just something. Because my brain just, yeah. is how it is. So... What initially got you? Like, what was the what was the tick in your brain initially? It was like, I need to draw. To the point where it developed into working on both games and comics. And why don't you well, do shit for RPGs? And why why what now? Why don't you do shit for RPGs? <laughs> I'm just saying to help your bank account, Caitlin. That's I'm just sure. trying to help your bank account. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, well, the games happened because, uh, you know, so I went to school for illustration. And um, when I graduated, I, I got into a local company in Rochester, New York, when I was living there, uh, that was doing small games for Nickelodeon. Mm. And uh, I was very new to the whole thing, new to animation, new to everything. So I was kind of like learning on the job, but it somehow was like a good timing for me because it was, you know, it was kind of ground floor. We were, it was a new company. So I, there was kind of room for me to learn and grow and everything. Um, and now that company is like 40 something people, I think. Um, but when we first started, it was really small and I, you know, learned all about animation and typography and all this other stuff. Um, but yeah, I took the job because it's, you know, it was, I graduated in 08, <laughs> you know, and it was like, it was a scary time. And like, it was just really, really lucky that I, I knew somebody who was working there who, you know, helped me out, learn how to use Flash. This was like Flash era, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, yeah, so it was just a really good, it was a lucky break and I had 70K in student loans to pay off. So I was like, I need something that's going to. You know, so it's it was it was a mixture of things, but um, I learned so much on that job, and you know, I'm I'm grateful for it because it means I you know I could take those skills to other game jobs, you know. Um, and then the comic book thing happened because I was just trying to like I mean I started off in fine art, and then went into illustration, and then was trying to figure out while I was doing my game job like what I wanted to do personally, you know, and I was trying all different things. I did these huge paintings of uh, bands that I knew that I were, I was friends with in, in town. These were like four by six foot or eight foot paintings. And um, I was doing like these fine art projects. And then eventually I decided to try comics. And I just thought, well, I need to make a comic in order to try to make, you know, in order to get, get a job in comics. So I did like a like a 10 page short story thing that I did myself um, without knowing how to do anything. And 
started kind of like showing that around. And um, that's how Sean Lewis got to me. He's the one who uh, wrote Coyotes and Bliss. Well, real quick, uh, Caitlin, you draw phenomenally for everybody. If you're watching, Thanks. you can see it right down here. There's some, there's some of Caitlin's art right here. Okay. I, I don't know what it is at this particular moment. It's probably, yeah, but, you know, because, because, yeah, editing, whatever. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> you know, um, so what, I mean, because you've worked, you've worked on some stuff to the point where, mm -hmm. like, well said what he said, which kind of amused me, to be real honest, what well said on the page. I'm like, uh, I don't think you all got to hear that. It depends on, I don't remember if the show had started or not. No, I don't think the show had started. If you pay on the Patreon, you may be able to hear it. But shout out to Wells, Grant, as well as you, Caitlin, for coming on and discussing comics and film and TV. It was a phenomenal discussion. Y'all can check it back. Uh, well, on the, it's either a few episodes back or it's, um, or no, one episode back. Or it's um, on the PanCon uh, YouTube, if you're on YouTube. Uh, so it depends on where you are, where y'all are finding that. Um, I'm, I'm curious out of everyone, I about lost my fucking question in the middle of my ramble, Caitlin. Did you see it? I did. I about <laughs> lost my question. So I'm curious, getting into the comic book industry, you said you got your comics when you were 31. So I'm assuming you're okay. So, so that's not that many years ago. Right, mm -hmm. like how long? Like how long have you read comics, or was that just like you just like I'm just gonna draw them? Like, you, and what are you reading? Like, <laughs> like come on. Like, yeah, I didn't read a lot of comics growing up. I, I mean, I read you know a lot of the classics. I read Mouse, you know, Calvin and Hobbes, and I, you know, kind of all, all over the place. You know, Persepolis, things like that. But um, none of the none of the big two. I guess I could have just read the questionnaire. It's in front of me. So. That's that's funny, but hey, look, look, I read a lot of them too. Look, I read a lot of Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes too. You know what I mean? I mean, I mm -hmm. think like I enjoyed those just as much as I enjoyed. And they probably really led me to the point where I'm fucking reading plastic and God knows what else now. And crazy people writing crazy shit. And I'm waiting for Erica on that X23 uh, Deadly Regenesis graphic to drop. I'm really looking forward to it, X, uh, Erica. You know, and you say your favorites of Sam, man. Right. I'm curious, is there something that tickles your brain to draw, especially between those big two, especially in the fact that you really didn't read a lot of them? I mean, a lot of people that get into comics, they have an association in their childhood with either Marvel or DC. So part of them's like, oh, shit, you know, I want to draw Wolverine or I want to draw Batman or I want to, you know, like there's a real, which is phenomenal. And if, you know, if, I have no problem with, let me say, I'm not trying to be sarcastic and saying all of that. I'm just saying, in your case specifically, you didn't. So is there anybody, as far as a bigger character, that you look at and you go, man, I just really want to draw it? I mean, like you said, you know, my favorite uh, series is The Sandman. So I'm always happy to draw any of the Endless or any other characters from that series. Um, anything from Saga? I mean, it, um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I mean, honestly, the characters I like to draw, I would like to draw are from like books that I read when I was a kid, you know? Um, and like, that's the kind of stuff, you know, when I was growing up, it was all fantasy and science fiction. So. Can I, and I'm just gonna, you can have this idea. I don't care. Yeah. All right. Like, if you feel like this is a brilliant idea, and it might be, uh, and you just want to run with it and go make it a comic. Caitlin, I don't care. Do it, right? Okay. You said you read a lot of Calvin and Hobbes. Um, are they... Not a lot. All right, well, well, are they um, are they still in the copyright? Or are they for use? Do you know? No, I think they're still... I think he's still... Isn't he still alive? Bill Watterson? I know Pete yeah. Herman just died not long ago. I couldn't tell yeah. you... Bill Watterson is still alive. I had no idea. I couldn't even told you the name of the creator of Calvin and Hobbes. Shout out to you for that knowledge. I don't know why you're worried about your knowledge. Everybody's knowledge is different. That's the fact that you knew the creator of Calvin and Hobbes is pretty impressive in my opinion. Well, he's a, I mean, he's a, uh, I think he is, but, um, 
So what, your idea was to do something with that? Well, I mean, you've seen the Winnie the Pooh, right? The Well, even uh-huh. the preview of it where he got free use and suddenly he's Jason Voorhees, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Terrible movie. That's not my suggestion with Calvin and Hobbes. Let's <laughs> just make okay. it really, really, really clear. That is not my suggestion. <laughs> I couldn't watch the entirety of that movie. It was terrible. It was bad. It was, and uh, mind you, I'm not a fan of horror films. So, you know, sorry, I'm not your target audience either. But as a film, it was bad. But if you take Calvin and Hobbes and you give him kind of like an anti bullying, slightly anti hero on Hobbes' mm-hmm. side and Calvin trying to be the nice guy and they're older, no, I think that'd be a pretty good story. Yeah, that it, could be really fun. Yeah, but, but more like the anti hero side where Calvin's like, why are you doing that? And I ostensibly make it to where Calvin kind of has a bit of a Steve Rogers personality. I mean, not full blown Steve Rogers, but, and then, you know, Hobbs has a bit of like a Wolverine or Deadpool personality, maybe more Deadpool. Mm. Cause you always seem not to quite all be there anyways, you know, <laughs> but, but you know, he's got, he's got the person right there calming him down always. So he never quite goes to the, the Deadpool Wolverine level of like slicing people to pieces. It always is a right. bit more, you know what I mean? And to do that with Calvin yeah. and Hobbes, shit, someone needs to do that, Caitlin. I don't care if you want to write <laughs> it and pitch it to somewhere that has the license. I mean, hell, they might. Look, let's be honest. They It's all about nostalgia right now. It, I could see that making yeah. money. Have you seen the one where uh, it, it's called Chief O'Brien at Work, I think? And I don't know if you watch any Star Trek, but it's from. So Chief, o, <laughs> Chief O'Brien is originally from the Next Generation series, and it's just him. <laughs> I think he's in the transporter room. I think that's where he works. And it's just him standing there. And it's about his job. Like, because, you know, it, it, whenever they they cut to him, it's like he's doing something, right? But then, like, what does he do the rest of the time? So the comic was just, like, he just being by himself and, like, kind of sad. It was kind of, like, it was kind of, like, a, a little bit of, like, a Garfield without Garfield. Did you see that one? No. It was, it was. It was Garfield, but they took all the drawings of Garfield out, so it was just, like, John talking to himself, and it was really, like, kind of existential and depressing. (laughs) Yeah. That makes John seem like a real psychopath. (laughs) Like Really lonely, really lonely. Well, no. That seems John maybe on, like, I don't know, some Zodiac (laughs) killer type activity. (laughs) If you're just literally like the whole time you're just like, no, what what is John doing when we're not watching him on the panel is what I want to know. If Garfield's not there and John's just talking to the air, I need to know what this dude is doing when he's not in his house just talking to himself, all right? Because there are other Maybe things. Maybe you don't want to know. I, I, I told you, I've read plush plastic and vinyl. No, I very much want to know, right? And maybe <laughs> yeah. I don't, though. I don't know. Like, you could you can... There's even certain things like he like yeah like if he's getting like Serbian film level I don't want to hear about it I don't know if you, <laughs> I don't know if you know what that film is no you can look it up don't ever watch it and that's all I'll say about it okay like it was it was, it was so bad <laughs> and I don't even mean like it's a bad film I just mean like it's it's so wrong in what they do yeah. In that particular film, like, it's, it's scarring to watch. It, yeah, yeah, and understand that if I wouldn't have been running a horror movie review show on the radio that I ran that we were discussing earlier, and one of the guys on it had picked it, and I was set up to review it, I would have turned that shit off fifteen goddamn minutes in. That is the only reason mm-hmm. for me out there that I have ever watched a Serbian film. It's because one time I was made to by this asshole that was a co-host on that show. And if I ever meet him in person, <laughs> I might stop. Just, just, just one, no, I'm not going to kick his ass. Just, just one time, I might just, bam! All right, we're good now, dude. But what yeah, the fuck, yeah. all right? Even. Like, yeah. like, don't ever tell me to watch anything like that ever, <laughs> ever again. Like, yeah. It, yeah. It's the closest I'll ever get to a live action crossed, hopefully. Mm. By Garth Ennis. What's, what? Oh, okay. Okay, I never read it. I mean, I mean, uh, 
it, I, I, I don't recommend turning it into a film either. But it's a fantastic comic, I will say that, as far as how it's written. Mm-hmm. But if it was just to be played out in something to where it was all fully there, it would be too damn much, you know? It was it was almost too much as it was, right? So let's let's just like flip to something else entirely different because I want to, right? Right, right. So what you got working on right now, Caitlin? That you can tell us. Because I feel like there's like a thing or two <laughs> that you can't talk about. Which I'll be honest, yeah. happens regularly on the show. There's a dude that currently hasn't even been on yet because I'm waiting to bring him on until he can talk about the project that he's on right now. God, that's annoying. Uh, well, yeah, I do. I've only got two things going on right now, or 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 one, and then the, and then the next. Uh, so I have like a, a an issue of W. Maxwell Prince's uh, Swan Songs that he's been writing for Image. Um, I'm doing issue four, so I'm drawing that right now. And then uh, when I'm finished with that, I am moving on to a mini series that got greenlit recently. Um, that I don't have any information about, but it will probably be out next year at some point. And it's my first time writing and drawing, so I'm really excited. Wait, you're writing it and drawing it, but you have no information about it? Well, I don't, I'm not going to share any information. About okay, it, okay, because I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, look, I might be a little at, at, at moments, but I'm pretty sure if you say you're writing it and you're drawing it and it's been greenlit, and then you tell me you don't know what it's about. One of those, <laughs> one of those statements does not correlate with the other. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. No, I, mean, I know, I know, I know what it's about. I just can't, I, I can't divulge yet. It's too early. Can you tell us who it's with? I, I guess I don't really know what the rules are. Uh, it's Dark Horse. Nice, nice. Uh, my wife actually picked up a horror. Wait, but. Man, I don't even want to say the name of it because I I haven't had the chance to read it yet because I've got other things. Uh, Haro County. Yeah, it's Haro County. I'll say that. Oh, uh-huh. It's from Dark Horse. Yeah, she apparently is because uh, she picked up Hairball as well going to the comic shop with me. So apparently she just likes Dark Horse. So, you know, there's there's that. And I mean, I've been a fan of Dark Horse for got a long time. I mean, I could, if I had all my graphics I used to have, I could show you so much Alien and Predator shit. You'd be like, Jesus. <laughs> Which kind of upsets me based on the fact that if you get it now, it says Marvel, and they're not going to put them in whatever. I don't want to get into that. But what's being done with the Predator and the Alien series over there is phenomenal. Check out check out Deck when we had him on, and we talked all about that. <clears throat> what was that like as far as the pitching process in that to Dark Horse? Like, as far as to get it to the point where you would come up with the concepts, and then to get them to be like, yeah. We'll totally publish that. And you can't give us, like, just a little detail, like, like nothing, like, nothing. There's no, like, one sentence you can say about this story. No, I'm going to keep it, keep it, uh, keep it sealed for now. But, yeah, so, so it's, it, all right, I'll say it's dark fantasy. That's what I'll say. Okay, okay. Dark, ur- urban, urban fantasy, dark fantasy. Yeah. Um, I'll take so, it. I'll take it. Okay. So the the pitch process is really strange. It's, again, it's like my first time doing this, right? And I've, I've only written once before, and it was for a very short 10-page uh, story for Boom um, that I didn't know I was going to be writing for when I got the job. I thought I was just doing the art. And then they were like, so what are your story okay. ideas? And I was like, excuse me, <laughs> what? Um, but it was for Buffy, and so it was like the perfect foray into writing for me because I didn't know what I was doing but I was like I am such a giant Buffy fan that I know this universe inside and out and I kind of was like really excited and I came up with a zillion ideas and it was really really fun so I was like oh this it kind of so it kind of lit the spark for me made me want to start thinking about writing other stuff that, that was like right the, right before the pandemic hit so um Ooh. so I had a bunch of other projects that I was drawing anyway and I didn't have time to kind of like pursue that until you know the last year or so but yeah it took like a year like it was like last fall or something that I started coming up with ideas and pitching them to different places um and uh yeah so it's it's a long and arduous process and a lot of the time you just don't hear back from people and that's you know understandable people are busy but um you know when you do uh get someone interested you you tend to do a lot more you do a lot more work with the editor 
uh, fleshing out the story before you get started writing than I thought, than I thought. Like it was, it's, it's, it was like months of going back and forth with editors, um, with a, a couple different, I, I have one other publisher interested in another thing. And so it was just interesting watching and like being involved in that process because I, I'm so unfamiliar with it, but, um, it was it was nice it was nice to collaborate too because you know again I I don't really know what I'm doing yet so it's nice to have somebody kind of you know mm -hmm. having your back and being like does this make sense I don't know if that makes sense what if what if we took these characters and did more with them you know and so kind of just like getting a solid you know a solid structure before you start putting things together. So you said you started with a Buffy story I'm going to assume that the story you're writing, while it's an urban dark fantasy, that this is an original property? Yes. All right. Yes. I'm just trying to find out as much as I can. Give my brain five more minutes, <laughs> and I'll come up with a couple other questions. And it'll be like, he got me to slip and say something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, female antagonist, male antagonist. What can I find out here? Male antagonist, or male male protagonist, sorry. Uh, and, well, he's kind of an anti-hero. There you go. Male anti-hero. I love me Hell a good anti-hero. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think those yeah. are some of the greatest characters and stories, in my opinion, are the anti-heroes, because they always seem to be the ones that have more confliction that, in my opinion, is far more realistic in life. Mm -hmm. um then mm -hmm. then you know fucking superman i'm sorry like mm -hmm. just yeah but that's just my opinion so to that note how did you go into well, this hang on hang on one second i just have one thing to contest with that i think that there's room for both of those to exist i think that it's okay for e each one it's like think about you got you've got like okay think about in tv terms right you have breaking bad and that anti-hero brilliant right but then you got ted lasso and he's basically Superman. He's like the sweetest, nicest person who just wants to do good things. And it's like, what? those both worked. Those both worked. What is Ted Lasso? Just, what is it? Yeah, yeah. Is, is that because wasn't there a show just named Ted Lasso? And that was the name of the show? <laughs> or what am I thinking of? Yeah. Yeah. It's called Ted Lasso. It's yeah. huge. I, <laughs> do, you think, do you think that matters to me, Caitlin? I don't know. I... I vaguely, Sorry, I, was just like, I vaguely know. You were like, I thought you were like messing with me for a second. I was like, what? No. Yeah. I, I yeah. really, I don't. I've heard of the series, but it is nothing that is in my brain in any capacity until somebody says it's the totally name, fine. and I'm like, oh, isn't that like a show? And then like, or isn't that like, dude, like part of a show? And they're like, that's the name of the show. And I'm like, oh, all right. <sighs> I'm not talking fucking sports with you either, just to be clear. <laughs> to be fair, I, I didn't want to watch it because I don't really like sports. And then it turned out to really not be about sports. It's about all these people involved in it. So it's like... It's, wait, wait, it's for, yeah. wait. This show yeah. is about sports? It's... The setting is an English football team right so it's a soccer team and so it's about this american ted lasso who is who, who's recruited to to coach a an, an english soccer team and so like the 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 premise is there but it's not really there's no you don't the the soccer it's or the football whatever itself is not really in uh that big but you understand that i said what i said just because i don't watch sports I didn't know uh -huh. that show was about sports in any capacity. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was just. Uh, yeah, no, I did not know that. I guess you mm -hmm. learn something on each and every quest every day, man. I just that's, that's but but okay. That, um, let me get back to the question that I, I was got, about to flip around yeah, to. Sorry. All right, didn't we just got on a topic of Ted Lasso, which I, I'll I'll. No offense, I don't care how tell you how great you tell me it is. I don't have time. I ain't watching it, right? I personally, That's fine. yeah, personally, I recommend the Twisted Metal show that just came out. Especially if you ever played Twisted Metal, I cannot believe they did a, a Twisted Metal show, and they did it that well. I am. Yeah. Have you watched it? No, I 
I played it once, one time okay, when okay. I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit older than you, so I played it a bit more because you know it was more what was available and really hyped at the time when the PlayStation came out. Let me age myself. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was it was done really well. But again, not my point. Not my point. I digress. I do that a lot. Caitlin, my bad, I really do. But I'm curious, how did you go into this story then? Um, knowing what you knew as far as when you were going into Buffy, you were handling a previously uh, a, a universe yeah. that you were fully aware of. The characters were developed. They were there, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I am a firm believer in to have a, diver- a character that's, that's fleshed out is one of the most important things. You know what I mean? That's why mm-hmm. uh, when Heather came on, we talked specifically about Jerry Duggan's run with Deadpool because of how much he actually literally flushed the character out, giving him a kid. It was, he gave that character a lot more depth than he'd ever truly had. He was always just a dark soul that you never, but, but then you seen this and you were like, Oh shit. So how did you go about in writing? Just cause it's only going to be four issues. You only got so much time to make it to where these characters were fleshed out to where people could sympathize or, you know, hate them or whatever. Like what was the process yeah. in that to you? Um, I mean, I think part of it, you know, um, is trying to take from the people, you know, in your life, you know, kind of just borrow aspects of people's personalities and see how they fit with each other. And if you can make some kind of narrative from there, again, this is like the, this is, we were, you know, I haven't started the official issue writing yet. So we're like, we just kind of fleshed out the premise and everything. So that, that isn't really it's not really as developed. Um, so I don't really have an answer for that one, but I, I'm curious myself how that works. <laughs> yeah. Intriguing answer. And definitely not the one that I expected. Just like, really, you said, uh, the comic book movie, you don't think did the, do- the comic justice. You had an answer that I'm pretty sure hasn't been given. Um, it's definitely not a common one in Hellboy, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think made that like one of the worst comic book adaptations out there, or is that just the one that stuck in your head? Yeah, it, I don't. I wouldn't say it's one of the worst. I just, I just remember watching it and thinking this does not feel anything like the world of Mike Mignola. You know what I mean? Like. Like looking at the the art direction and the vibe of it in general, just didn't it didn't um, it didn't have the same quality. It didn't have the same otherworldliness that you know that his drawings have. You know. Did you watch um, the uh, any of the animated ones? No. Are they good? I mean, I I think they're far far more like the comic uh, than the. Uh, yeah show ever was i mean the film ever was but i think that also has in part to do with um well god i'd say it has in part to do with recreating sets but then i take that back some of the i don't know maybe it does it's mm, that's because you would have to add a cgi background to make some of the sets that mike has drawn and that were in the animated series i mean you can make part of it but then you couldn't make the whole thing a lot of the stuff they did in hellboy was it was more contained in one area as opposed to, you know, here's a landscape, you know, mm-hmm. which is a lot of what Hellboy is. So I, I think that, that, yeah, I don't know if it would have cost more or not, but I, I think it definitely, the uh, animated series is closer to anything that's been done so far. Now, mind you, in saying that, they're getting ready to do another Hellboy film. Oh, really? With Ron Perlman still? No, no. Don't you know Hollywood loves its reboots? And when I say they're getting ready to do another Hellray or a Hellboy film, I guess I should say, whenever the strike ends, I don't know. Maybe they're yeah. not. Yeah, we're going to wait a long time for pretty much everything. Uh, but that's got to happen. Uh, yeah, but you know what's sad in that process? You know what's going to happen in that process, right? Because... Hmm. TV channels have to rely upon something. They have to have something to put out, right? And yeah. you know, and you don't need writers to record a bunch of people after you slam them in a room and they're all just all miserable together so everyone can feed off a bunch of other assholes' misery as opposed to, you know, but that's a, a sorry, I hate reality television and that's really the big thing that's going to come back from it. And I, I, 
I'm a firm believer that 90% of reality television is just taking joy in someone else's misery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no arguments here. I'm, I'm good on that. I'm really, really good on that. I don't need that in my life, man. And, like, I really just, I hope this too shall pass. Yeah, Link is... Because, you know, I like entertainment. But hopefully they'll be sensible enough, you know, not to fucking... Like, at least hire artists like you for the next Marvel intro. Or someone, because that should kill me. So what do you think of uh, that little aspect of all of this? As far as the, the AI end of Well, did you see the Secret Invasion intro? For Marvel? No, actually, uh, I I've muted the words... I've muted AI, artificial intelligence, and everything from my social media because it makes me so angry that I can't I can't handle reading anything about it. I can't handle looking at anything about it. I just hate it so much. So you and Mike can get along real well. That's Mike Ruth. You can check him out on like Ford past things. I don't know. If you come on a couple more pan cons, Caitlin, you'll end up encountering Mike. He's a great guy. But yeah, he's very much against AI, but no, the Secret Invasion, the new show that dropped from Marvel, the most recent one, they did an AI generated oh. intro. Yeah, I heard about that. Yep. It was bad. And by bad, I, I mean heard. it was literally the worst intro I can think of in, in like period. <laughs> I don't know who I was talking to that was like, now hold on. Fuck, it might have been on the Pancom we discussed this slightly, did we? I don't know if we did. I don't think we did. It might have been with Doug and Doug. I don't know. A past Pancon, Pancon or Quest, very, very recently, we discussed this. And uh, somebody, God, I can't remember who, was uh, like, man, let me take you back to like the 80s or like ABC and NBC and I'll show you some bad intros. And I was like, look, but that's not for something of that level that you're putting that much production and money into. It was by far mm-hmm. the worst intro I've ever seen. It was, it was bad. But so. Yeah. So when it comes to all those good AI art programs and all them nice fancy chat GP, uh, GP and things to that effect, you're just not a fan, huh? No, not at all. No. What specifically? And when I ask this, I want you to understand, nor am I. All right. I'm not a fan at all of AI generated content like that. Mm-hmm. What about it to you makes it to where you're like, yeah, go away with all that crap. Oh, where to start, man? Um, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> like, I, I guess the biggest thing. Okay, so if we're gonna stick to AI art <clears throat> stuff, right? No, you can quote unquote you, art. Uh, I've well, I'm no. ju- just just to start, okay. we're somewhere. Right? Okay. Okay. So with AI art stuff, it's it's it just seems like a lot of. Um, tech bros who don't want to learn how to draw or paint or do anything and they just want to skip ahead to doing these finished pieces and it's the the as far as i know the way it works is that it the the ai just takes from a bunch of different images without anyone's consent and steals from them and then mashes it together to give people what they ask for in these prompts and i just Obviously, I have a problem with that. I think that's really unethical and uh, lazy. And people calling themselves artists after doing no work is like kind of ridiculous. Um, and then the, and then calling us elitist for being mad about it because we spent our whole lives working to, you know, hone skills that they're stealing from us and repurposing. So yeah, I have I I'm not a fan at all. And then. When it comes to the the you know the other AI stuff, you know I can see why people are excited, but I also feel like we're doing that thing where we're going to put hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people out of jobs, and we're not going to have any way to help them find something else. And like there was somebody on Twitter, I think, or somewhere that said something uh, really funny and well depressing actually about AI. They said, uh, "What is it?" They said robots painting and writing poetry while the rest of us do the hard work is not what I envisioned for the future. It was like just paraphrasing, but that was basically what it said. And I was like, oh my God, that's so true. 
Like, why would we want that? Why would we want AI books? Like, why? You know? I... Anyway, that's that's my rant. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. And I, I can do nothing but completely agree. Um, As far as in everything you just said, Caitlin, I don't, I don't understand. And I think it's also the fact that there is a lack of understanding that if we as a species don't thrive to make great art, we as a species won't truly advance. Because if you look throughout human history, typically then when there is a, just a step up in creativity, it's a step up in everything. You know, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not just... Oh, look at these cool stories. It's like, look at these cool stories and all this other... Like, I, I don't care. You asked earlier about if I had watched Star Trek. I mean, I've watched a bit of Star Trek. I've watched the Star Wars films. I'll be honest. Neither of those are my jam. I know as someone that runs a podcast like this, I'm a nerd. I, I should have an opinion, right? I should have an opinion. One's better than the other. And they're both all right. I just really hope in the long run that one... Uh, Heather Antos kills what she's doing over there at IDW with the Star Trek universe. And two, that we as a species get to the Star Trek universe as opposed to the Star Wars one. Because look, there ain't nobody walking around being like, I will the force. That's going to help us in the long run. We're all just going to blow up each other's planets that we respectively live on. And then we'll be nothing. So I just, I, I really hope for a Star Trek future you know it's it's the only science fiction like major science fiction uh you know franchise or whatever that tells a, a, a generally utopian story of the future you know like everything else is dystopian and it's like one glimmer of hope where like oh maybe we get past capitalism and we just have these replicators and we all follow our dreams and like shoot you know like it it's it's hopeful, I think. I mean, it's not nothing's perfect in that universe, but it's at least, you know, I think going in the right direction. That, um, that's what I need yeah. in life is an AI machine that doesn't generate art. It doesn't generate stories. It doesn't generate all that. When I walk up to it and I go, yo, man, give me some deep fried rice and some bourbon chicken. It just <laughs> appears. All right. That's the kind of AI I need in my life. Not the kind where I'm like, hey, tell me a story about blah, 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 blah. No. See, mm-hmm. and it, it it baffles me. Now, let's cut to this, man, because I, I got a point I got to bring up, because I just, for some reason, I had it earlier, and I've never said it on the show, and I don't get you know, how people get it, so you're going to yeah, take this opinion, but we're going to get to that in a moment. What do you think about the fact that people well, look at this AI bullshit generated by Chad GPG and the art and all this, and they're like, oh, that's awesome, and but then so many people downgrade comics as something that is not an art form. I mean, this isn't as common as it used to be in any way, shape, or form, but but there are people that would look at Neil Gammon's work or or Alan Moore's work and tell you it's a picture book, and it makes me want to smack them with a hardcover edition of either a Neil Gammon or an Alan Moore. Yeah, I know what that would do. Caitlin, so do you. That's, that's just rude, but that's what it makes me want to do when you tell me those things are picture books. Why do you think there is such a disassociation there from understanding that it is art compared to thinking that that bullshit's art when it's clearly not because it wasn't created by human consciousness? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know. It's, I I think that there was there's a lot of old um ideas about what comics are still kind of lingering you know so you know because comics started mostly in superhero worlds and so people think it's it's nothing but that and nothing but that in terms of like the more campy versions you know like the you know and so it's i think people just have this kind of stereotypical view of it and there has but I, i haven't met that many people that have um you know, ragged on comics, and at least in front of me, maybe they do <laughs> behind my back. I don't know, but I, I, I don't know. I just don't. I don't have, I don't have the energy for for those people. I don't know what to tell them. Like it, they could, you know, they could think what they want. I don't, you know. I, don't, I just. I don't worry about it too much. It's the it's the way Wilson side of me. I just want to smack him with a hardcover edition of like Watchmen. Because come on, I mean, Bailey. I used to be. 
I used to get more of this like righteous anger about stuff like that. And now I'm just kind of like, you know, people are just going to be what they're going to be. And then I just, I don't have the, I don't have the energy anymore to, to be mad at them. I'm just like, you just live your life and leave me alone. It's fine. Personally, and I agree, whatever. It's only when somebody like won't shut the hell up about it for some reason to me, when I've clearly told them I'm not interested in the conversation, you go out there. Uh, That's the person that I just want to be like, look, man, Here's your side. And it's that hardcover edition of Watchmen and me forcefully, you know, smacking them upside the head with it because I'm like, you wouldn't shut up. So, you know, I I showed you what literature was and then you walked away, especially realizing, and this is the thing I don't understand, the earliest way that we communicated as a species with through pitch, was through pictures. And then, you know, the language developed through pictures slowly over this and that. I don't understand why people would see it's such a terrible thing to take words and pictures and put them on paper and it'd be a problem. I mean, that's what every movie you watch is. Hell, that's what about a third of shit that comes out nowadays is even based on as far as it being comic mm-hmm. books. I mean, you know, what? Like, I, I just don't get how people don't relate it throughout history as something that is in a way important. Like, superheroes have created one of the most modern mythologies that exist. Uh, we'll be getting into depth on comic book mythology with a hell of a cast. Hey, one of them's actually Mike Root. He drew this swamp thing right here. Um, it's just funny because we were talking about him a moment ago because he fucking hates AI. Kaylin, he, he, yeah. he it's a, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's like he's very much annoyed by it. Um, I should tell him you can just take that to where it don't appear in your show. Show you should like. Could you tell me how to do that so I can tell Mike? I think it would just. Like, make him feel a little better about getting on social fucking media if he knew that wasn't going to appear to be real honest. Um, shit. I babbled so long, I lost my damn point. Um, that's that. That's the That's that. That's that. That's that's too many concussions and a couple other things and, you know, the autism, <laughs> whatever. I can't, I can't fucking help it. Um, uh, oh, yeah, just the fact if I don't get why people don't see that, because, like I said, I think it's important that we understand any medium is a medium. I, I went off like six points. See, that straight up is the autism, Caitlin. That's why like, I need a moment to get back to what the hell my original point was because it had a question laced with it somewhere. You ever have that when you're developing a story? Like it just spider webs out to too many points and you're like, I need to yeah. practice. A-. What do you do in those cases where you're like, you like, you take this and then you're like, suddenly there's two thoughts off that, and then there's two thoughts off each of those. What do you do to make sure you're developing a story in that manner to where you're able to tie the web back together ostensibly, I'll say? I mean, again, I can't speak too much to it because I've only done that one short story so far, but I, the way I remember it going is that I had all these different ideas and I had one overarching idea that was sticking and then other ideas that were, I was kind of shoehorning in there but then they were it was too much because basically it was it was a 10 page story so I had to fit it on 10 pages which is actually kind of great if you're trying to write for the first time because it forces you to edit everything out that you don't need so I think that's I mean I'm I don't know how it's going to be for this future thing but I it seems that way like it seems like that you're just going to have to edit everything out that doesn't um, move the plot forward not everything but most things that don't move the plot forward the main plot you know um, and, you know, figure out if there's like little side stories that can, that can assist the main plot and things like that. But again, I'm, this is a big learning process for me, so I really don't know. <laughs> well, but the point you make can be validated by a lot of things. It's like comparative, uh, if you read, say almost any image comic, uh, apart from a few, you know, there's just a couple standalone issues. Like I could sit here and point to like boom idw they do a lot of things dark horse um included do a lot of things where it's like okay there's just going to be four or six or 12 issues and then that's it and in those you know you only have those four or six 12 stories but then you know you've got like marvel and they're doing a bigger bit and they don't have to worry about not telling a side story they think it's important to include a little tidbit in the main story that makes you want to go read that side story what do you think about the fact of how that's handling, and with you just getting into writing, would you be interested in getting into something like that? As far as like taking part in, you know, a, a crisis 
or some kind of gauntlet or infinity, mm. whatever. Like, is that is that part that tickles your brain now that you're getting into this writing, or are you just wanting to more like, go about creating like cross like cross property stuff? No, no, like a huge crossover. You know, what I mean, like something in the Marvel or DC universe individually yeah. that is that is something that involves half their characters. You know. Yeah. Um. I mean, I did one of those story. I did like a Dark Crisis um backup story, and. You know, it was fun, but it was, it's not for me, I don't think. Um, these, like, big cataclysmic events, like, it's, eh, you know. Um, I like the more um, personal, emotional stories, you know. For me, that's, like, where I, where my happy place is. I really like, uh, di- you know, emotional dynamics between characters, drama, things like that. So, I mean, I love the, the fantasy and science fiction with it, but I, um, yeah, my favorite stuff is, like, the more character-driven moments. Is that to write, to draw, or both? Uh, I think both. I think both. So you wouldn't want to, like, draw a, you know, two-page spread with, like, 30-some characters from either DC or Marvel in some kind of epic battle? Like, that's not, that's not all you're I mean, I, I just did that last year, and I wouldn't, no. <laughs> no, it's not for me. Yeah. Yep. No. <laughs> That was the greatest answer I think I've ever gotten to that question. Like, <laughs> someone being like, look, no, I just did it. And just, I don't want to do it again. You understand me? Um, it, was, it was too much. And I, and oh my God. I mean, it wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just not, it's not my wheelhouse. I'm not, I didn't grow up with those characters. So I don't mm. really have that, like, oh my God, I finally get to do this. And I finally get to draw this guy. And, you know, it, it's, so it was more to me just like, oh man, now I got to make sure I get everybody right and know which version of them I'm doing and which costumes and everything. So it was more just like stressful to me than anything else. I could definitely see that. I imagine for people that are even grew up with those characters, sometimes if they get a task like that, it's still an amount of research based on how often some of those characters change costume and this and that and you do have to be specific about in you know if you're writing a part of that event that you have them in their update costume and you you know peter parker suddenly shows up in like his classic spider-man costume and that's not what he's in he's in like a ff like yeah it's gonna mm-hmm. really skew the story and cause you the artist a pain in the ass when you have to go fix it mm-hmm. so that's a that's a fair point that i would have Never thought of. That's kind of, it's kind of screwy. Kayla kind of makes my brain hurt. Like <laughs> to realize that. I mean, so I. So what you're doing here is, do you have any desire? On the end, is there a property you'd like to write? I mean, like you said, you were a big Buffy fan. You've had a chance to write a tit page story for it. Is there anything else? Mm-hmm. And I mean, stuff that you know you could like. I, mean, I guess if you just want to name whatever, that's fine. But I would, I meant typically things that you would have found in Comic Book Row. You know what I mean? Which is um, pretty much anything. Yeah, you I mean, I don't, I don't think that there's a property that, like, I mean, Sam and I would never, I wouldn't touch that with a fifty foot pole. Like that's a meal game, and I just, I, I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing, even writing my first story. So I would never, ever, ever take something like that on ever, even if it became a thing but it's I think um no I think I just like I I like the idea of of doing my own stuff I did think about trying to adapt books some books into comic books at some point like I um there's a fantasy book uh called the wizard of earthsea or a wizard of earthsea um by Ursula K. Le Guin that I loved growing up and I would have given anything to write, to draw, like, an edit, you know, like, to make it work, to do a comic book version of it. Um, but it didn't, fl- I think I even tried once and didn't fly. But it, it was, it's a great story. And I just, I wish more people had, had read it because it's just awesome. Yeah. Well, you can check out that book. I don't, I, like, I don't, I, don't go giving me homework, okay? Because I ain't, like, unless, unless you're, like, Unless it's like, look, I did the art in this, and it's a really dope, dope story. It's a comic, but I, I can't add another book in right now. I got like three totally books. fine. I got like three books up here, plus like, uh, too many comics. Right, oh shit, yeah. right here that I, 
need to get to. I, I understand. Oh, know, time is the fun. other one I would. Yeah, um, the other one I would love to do a, an adaptation of, but I would never do because it would take too long. Is um, the Never Ending Story? It's actually a book. Um, great book, but it's really involved. There's a lot that happens in it. So it would take me like 15 years to drive, but I would, if I wanted, I want someone, I want someone to bring the, the book's vision to life in, I mean, I love the movie too, but it's really its own thing. You know, it's not really uh, close enough, I don't think, to the, the book, so. I mean, in all honesty, I think you find that in pretty much any medium as far as when they change something. I mean, I, I, can't think of a time where I've watched something and knew the source material or watched something and went and seen the source material that the source material, in all honesty, just, it, it, it was better. You know, <laughs> because they typically had more depth to it. Uh, apparently my yeah. dog doesn't agree for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> all right. Jesus. As far as the, the original was typically always better. Yeah. Like I've never, I've never had an instance where that specifically didn't occur. Thank you. There's a weird edit right there because I didn't want to look like an idiot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at least my dog wasn't barking. At least not that y'all heard. Uh, is, what do you think about people in that regard? I got, I got one more thing I just, I, I got to know, Caitlin, that, because, I mean, you've been doing comics for a while, and if you run across any people where you look at them and you go, well, this person's not creating comics. He's trying to create a movie pitch. Oh, um, nobody I know personally. I don't, um, I haven't come across it really, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've come across people asking me to do stuff that they wanted to turn into a movie, you know, like they wanted to pitch it as the comic book first kind of thing. And I was just like, not interested, but, um, so yeah, they're out there, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much of an opinion about them. I just, you know, I, I think it's all hard. Just the entertainment industry is hard, you know. <laughs> People are just trying to get whatever they can made. So I, I it, to a to a to a point, I understand it. But they they don't. If they're just trying to make a comic just to turn it into a movie, they don't really understand comics because there's there are things you can do in comics that you can't do in movies. So, um, yeah. No, no, no. I I fully agree with everything you've just said, and it's funny. It, as far as what you said, as far as people approaching you, um, trying to get you to like do something as far as art wise, that they were just, you're not the first guest on here that said that. Like I, yeah. I, it's been said at least a couple of times, which is, I, I just find kind of surprising. I don't know why you would try to go about creating a whole concept as far as, as opposed to just creating some pitches, which they, it just seems excessive if your whole goal is a, mo is a movie. And again, I think I agree with you. It means that you don't understand comics because, you know, if you're going to make your first film, they're probably not going to give you, uh, you know, a hundred million dollar budget. But with a comic book, if you pay the artist, you can do things in that comic that would cost a hundred million dollar budget on a film, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't get why that's lost. I like. I think I think it's because they know that so many comics have been adapted into shows and movies. Oh, yeah. So they think, oh, so they think, oh, that's my way in. If I just make like a, you know, a comic, then somebody will pay attention to it, which is not not how it works. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Robert Kirkman wasn't like, look, if I write this zombie comic, you just yeah. No, that's not the conversation that happened. He wasn't thinking that The Walking Dead was like I don't I don't think I mean I'm sure everybody hopes for that level of holy hell, but I if yeah. I don't think anybody goes into it expecting it. If they do, <laughs> the kind of an egomaniac because that's ridiculous. I mean that's that's an a crazy yeah. So I I don't know. I I'd like to think that if look if you're out there and you're a creator. And you're making a comic, can you just do me a favor and make it for the sake of the comic, not make it to try and be adapted into film? And realize that if you make a good enough comic and it's really good and it, you know, gets hopefully the attention that it deserves, because look, there are a lot of great comics out there, y'all, that, that do not get the attention they deserve. There's hell, I'd like a lot more time to be reading a lot more comics that I would personally like to because I would like to give them more attention. But again, time is finite. 
Um, then, then that's how it's going to get made. It's not going to get made because you made to make a freaking. <sighs> Caitlin, people hurt my head sometimes. Man, can I say you know you know what hurt my head more than anything? You're like you're like I want to talk about my current and recent projects, and then we get into your current project, and you're like, "Mum's the word." Well, I know what to tell you. It's it's very very early. I don't even know if I was supposed to tell you that it was Dark Horse. So, you know, uh, that's I can't really can't really get okay. into it. But I, I I'm I'm just talking about it because I want people I want I want to kind of start the start a little bit of buzz because I don't. I think I think the marketing has to be a, largely on me, so I I'm gonna I that's a whole other thing I gotta figure out. I'm assuming you have a someone you could talk to over at that company, so you can know if you can say that company's name, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, find out. If, okay. If you find out that you weren't supposed to tell me that, and mind you, I mean this this that time of filming and time of release is different. For I mean the guests obviously yeah. know that. Uh, let me know when you were supposed to, and because I, I can I can cut the audio real quick. I can that's a quick editing trick, and I don't want you in trouble. That's not the point of the quest. The point of the quest is to let y'all out there know a little bit more about the creators out there yeah. that are making phenomenal art, right? And Kaylin, it has been phenomenal, right? Except for them tech issues at the damn beginning, man. I swear I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't understand how you came on and have more tech issues on this than you did on the pan con i think that's what made my brain hurt like yeah i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> that's just really screwy right but for everyone out there watching right i want to let you know if you've enjoyed this interview with clayton right first look at all the links in the description check that out check out where she was on a pan con with wells and uh wells thomas and stephen grant right it was a phenomenal conversation that like i said is one episode back right but if you've enjoyed it what else i want you to do is i want you to just send her some fairies Right, with just a bunch of yeah Reese's peanut butter cups, right, right, uh huh, uh -huh. Uh, and a skip it, yeah. So, oh yeah. So fairies, yeah, with a with a bunch of Reese's cups and a skip it, uh -huh. right. That's what I want you to have, send her away if you've enjoyed this. Now, if for some reason you haven't, I don't know why you wouldn't, man. Caitlin's been a pleasure. It's been a it's been yeah, it's, it's been fun to have send you us a, a, a flaming a flaming bag of turd. No, the monster in it follows. I don't know that monster. I don't. I don't. I don't. I've never watched it follows, right? Um, and make sure it's smelling of Duran. I don't know what the hell that is either. Like, you were the only person... Durian. Durian. I don't know what the hell that is either. All right? All right. Okay, so I went to... I stayed in Thailand for about four months uh, a few years ago. And uh, over there, they have these huge spiky fruits called durian. And it's supposedly... I'm such a chicken, I didn't eat it. I should have eaten it. But uh, it supposedly tastes totally different than it smells. But it smells like garbage it smells like rotting garbage and so like it's supposed to obviously like you know deter predators and stuff but like that's what it smells like and it's really strong and there are whole carts full of them that you just like you're biking past them and you just smell that like it's it's really intense um but it's supposed to taste good it just doesn't taste anything like it smells which is unusual for a fruit you know all right yeah. So, Caitlin's the first one that has an I don't know what the hell I'm sending after. So, I hope it's not too terrible. Because sometimes I'm like, I gotta pull that back a little. That dude answered something that I don't feel like comfortable saying you should send after a human being. But, Caitlin's gonna get the monster from It Follows just smothered in durian. And that's, what, oh, that's, 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 that's what's happened if you did not like this interview. But, again, like I said, I had to grab something real quick. Make sure you check out all the links in the description. You've been checking, checking that art out, right? Well, if you're watching the video, you might just be watching the auto. If you watch the video, you've seen a bunch of dope art right here by Caitlin. You got to know a little bit of what she's got coming up that she can't talk about, right? But you can click the links in the description. You may know the comic book company she's about to work with. You may not. I don't know. I'll find that out at a later time if I've got to edit that out, which is 
freaking hilarious. But besides that, like I said, click all the links in the description. You can find all kind of ways to check out Galen's stuff. Make sure you like, subscribe, right? Give it that thumbs up. What else am I missing? Nothing besides the fact that you need to get your comic on. And have a good night, y'all. This is Mark McKenna here. Check me out at www.markmckennaart.com. This is Alex Segura, author of Secret Identity. My name is Sander Sarate. This is Laverne Kinjerski. This is John Ward, creator of Scratcher and a whole bunch of other crap. It's Jason Copeland, uh, artist and writer of Full Tilt. You are listening to The Questionnaire. Say that again. You got to check out The Questionnaire. He's been super fun and entertaining, honestly. He's like, <laughs> just like hanging out with friends and chilling. It's, it's, it's cool, man. I love it. It's, it's nice. You need to check out the questionnaire. I mean, you do. Have a file format you want, or even a carrier pigeon. New episodes every week. Jeez, I better write that shit down. I love y'all, and it's a hell of a quest.